Yeah. So I mean, on my my Pop OS laptop is what I'm doing the interview from. Um, I've got the uh, the I forget what the name of it is, but it's a it's a GNOME extension that gives you like the burning windows when you close mm-hmm. them. And so I've got about five or six different effects that kind of cycle through every time I close a window. You know, it either does the TV turning off effect, or it burns, or it teleports, or you know mm-hmm. what have you. And it's just it's just fun. It's a little bit of desktop bling, and mm-hmm. I I like it. I can't lie. I get why, like, UX designers don't like it, right? You want to have a consistent UX, sure, sure, whatever. But from a yeah. user's perspective, it's just fun. <laughs> it's fun. I, I like what Vaxry calls it, uh, ricing your desktop, ricing your Linux desktop. Mm-hmm. I I don't think I'm ever going to go down the Hyperlin route. I don't have the time to do it, but I get the appeal. I get yeah. why that's fun to do. Yeah, I've gone down that route in the past before, like, back when I was on i3 and BSPWM and Austin WM, things mm-hmm. like that, but... Maybe I'll maybe I'll do it again at some point, but right now I'm kind of just ha- I, I I hadn't used a DE when I first started using Linux, so now using it like after the fact, I don't know. It's just a pleasant mm. experience. I, like <laughs> I have I have my issues with KDE, but I, I I like it for the most part. So I've got my battle scars when it comes to desktop environments. Mm. I was running Fedora when KDE four launched. And I don't know if you're familiar with that oh, I'm that very, time in history. I, I wasn't there, but I, I've definitely gone back and uh, looked into that that history. Yeah. So KDE 4 was not the smoothest of releases. And the Fedora guys, being the Fedora guys, said, It's out! It's the 4.0.0 release! Ship it! Mm-hmm. And they shipped it with, you know, Fedora... Uh, I couldn't tell you. You know, some teens-level Fedora release. Like mm-hmm. 17 or something, maybe. And uh, it was, it was kind of broken. Um, you, you remember the uproar? But it were nine, okay, yeah. earlier than I thought it was. You remember the uproar when Microsoft shipped with the new settings panel and they didn't have everything actually ported yep, over yep, from yep. control panel? That's what happened in KDE4. Mm-hmm. They had the new setting stuff and they're just, it wasn't all there. Like you couldn't get all of your settings. And so we were running... Fedora 9, like days after it came out, and we would then go and install the Rawhide versions of KDE, Mm -hmm. because it worked better than the KDE 4.0.0 that we were stuck with running K- running Fedora 9. It was a it was a magical and wonderful time to be a Linux user. <laughs> to be fair, the KDE 4 issue was entire like I I can't really blame Fedora for this or any distro that shipped it because it was entirely on the fault of the KDE project. What they did is they labeled a dev release as 4.0. And they mm. knew internally it was a dev release. They didn't properly communicate that whatsoever. <laughs> well, let's let's be let's be honest though. Even if they had, Fedora was going to ship it. Oh, sure. That's just what Fedora is. That's just what they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was great. Yeah, I, I I think the reason you thought it was later is you forgot how long KDE five was around. That was around for about ten years. That's, that's probably true. <laughs> And the 4 to 5 transition, you know, I mean, I hardly noticed that. Mm-hmm. And the 5 to 6 transition, there's been a, l- a couple of little tiny... But honestly, 5 to 6, the problems there have been more growing pains with Wayland than KDE 6, gen- generally speaking. Well, the problems that I found with it are sort of just problems that have been there for 10 years and no one noticed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some of that, too. There's some of that, too. Like, there's a lot of... um. The, 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 my, my big issue and the reason I was going to quit KDE is there's an issue where every time you use a desktop effect and desktop eff- the, the way they're handling desktop effects now is not the same way they did in 5 um, I, f- I forgot the specific Qt library they're using but Qt Quick 3D? Maybe, doesn't matter um, that what it was doing is every time you use an effect it wasn't loading the effect into RAM so you can like reuse it again it was loading it from your drive so, mm. with things like opening up the tiling editor, or opening up Alt-Tab, or the shutdown interface, or a lot of the, like, the window, like, any of, any of that sort of stuff, every time you used it, mm. it would try to load it from the drive. That was fine if you have an SSD. If you use a spinning disk, though, you... Mm-hmm. Might have starter. problems. Might have a bad time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh... Uh, and you know, there's still there's still little little paper cuts. That's what they call them in the KDE project. There's still little paper cuts. Mm-hmm. Like there's one there's one today in it's in VS Code. So VS Code on my Fedora now, still 40, about to be 41, mm-hmm. KDE 6 and Wayland. 
Um, it gets into this weird state where it's like VS Code thinks that you have one of the mouse buttons held down. And so it doesn't select text, mm-hmm. but when you move the cursor to the top, VS Code just starts scrolling up for you. And when you move the cursor to the bottom of whatever you're looking at, it just starts scrolling down for you. Uh-huh. It's like, what's going on here? And the only, the only solution that I found is just close and reopen VS Code, and it goes away. It's mm. something between, you know, we're, we're at about seven layers of abstraction with all of our desktop applications at this point. Right, right. Um, and it's, it's something in between one of those layers where VS Code doesn't like Wayland or doesn't like KDE, and I... I have no idea what's going on. It's like, oh, when it happens, it's like, oh, sigh. Okay, and close it, open it back up, and go back to what mm. I was doing. Have you had much of a chance to mess around with Cosmic? I I have not installed it. Uh, one of my co-hosts over on the Untitled Linux show put it on, put it in a virtual machine for a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the the machine that's going to get Cosmic is actually this one. Mm-hmm. And it is my production machine, so I'm not going to put like the alpha on it, or probably not even the beta on it, just because I, I kind of need this laptop to work. Right, right. Um, but at some point, at some point, I'll go to it. Um, I don't have a, I don't have a, like a dedicated testing machine though that I can just slap that onto real sure, easily. Sure. Yeah, I've been having a lot of fun now uh, messing around with it. Uh, I don't run as my daily driver because it's <laughs> it, it's alpha software, right? Like it's, it's very much alpha software. Sure. This is why sure. I, this is why I like doing streams and people are like, hey, you're doing this on hardware? Like, yep. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, last stream that I did, when, when I do these streams now, um, sometimes the developers pop in, which is always fun. Uh, oh, yeah. I started the stream, and then like five minutes later, I noticed my cursor started like lagging, and it it something seemed weird. I opened up like BTOP, and I saw 32 gigs of RAM were in use, and 40 gigabytes of swap were in use. It's like, hmm. Oh, Oh. That feels like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be the way that's supposed to go. Yeah, I turned. I found out later all my VRAM was in use as well. So what it seemed to be is a memory leak that started with VRAM that overflowed into your system memory and then overflowed into the swap. Yeah. And luckily yeah. I caught it, otherwise my entire system would have frozen. Um, it was related to their desktop icons, which they had just implemented a commit ago. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, it's got problems, right? But if you think about what they're doing with Cosmic, nobody has done this for a very long time. They are writing a desktop environment essentially from scratch. They're Not doing it in scratch, a language. From, from a toolkit that... They, there wasn't really good GUI toolkits for Rust before. Like, they are a big driving force mm-hmm. behind that. Yeah, they hired the developer that was writing the toolkit, I think. Of Smithy, I yes. correctly. Yeah, Smithy. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and uh, but I mean, like, so nobody has tried to make a nobody has tried to make a new desktop environment for like fifteen years now. Mm-hmm. Nobody has ever tried to make a mainline desktop environment in Rust. Um, nobody has ever tried to make a mainline desktop environment that's Wayland only. And I, I am of the opinion that the Cosmic guys, they are just knocking it out of the park doing mm-hmm. what they're doing, and the fact that they've come to the point that they have come so quickly i'm very impressed and i'm excited to see what that project turns into uh, have you had a chance to check out anything from ubuntu summit that just happened no no very very little i've seen like uh one or two little snippet um very very little of it okay so uh, they did a um i think it was it was carl and victoria from system 76 who mm-hmm. went and did a, a talk at um uh, ubuntu summit on on cosmic and one of the things that they've, they've talked a lot about how Cosmic is this like composable and modular desktop, but from the configs they had, like they didn't, it wasn't really showing that. What mm-hmm. they have, they have a lot of power in the back end that isn't being exposed mm-hmm. directly to the user. One of the things they showed is that the panel is just a nested Wayland client. So, or a nested Wayland compositor. So you mm-hmm. can do stupid things. You can do normal <laughs> things, right? Like you can do normal things like, oh, you have your, whatever. You have like a system monitor. Fine. But you can do stupid things like embed an i3 status bar into the panel and just render a whole different panel. You can rent, like one of the things <laughs> I showed is rendering a video game into the panel. It's just nice. a Wayland compositor. You can you could do literally anything you wanted with it. And with a bit mm-hmm. of like daemon code in the background and hooking stuff up you can make pretty much any experience you want the only limitation right now is you know the lack of 
documentation um what mm. once it's out of alpha and <laughs> into the full release i i'm really curious to see what people can actually build with this system if they if they want like one of the examples they had is like oh you could just re-implement unity if you wanted like the, the power's here yeah it'll it'll be super interesting to see what people do with cosmic i i, I think it's gonna go places i really think it is um mm. i think honestly one of the coolest things about it you know i, I listed the things that they're doing for the first time one of the coolest things about cosmic is it does not have an x11 back end it is literally just wayland mm -hmm. and the 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 flexibility that that gives you to to make changes to it even um it's gonna it's gonna be really cool mm -hmm. and yeah i i imagine it's gonna it's gonna be a, a dominant force before much longer in the in the desktop space